to destroy the works of the evil one and the kingdom of darkness with light and to rescue men from the law of sin. This is the gospel of Christ to proclaim good news unto the poor. The gospel of Christ, spreading the soul-saving message of Jesus. And now, Ben Bailey. This is the gospel of Christ. If we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship. 1 John chapter 1, verse number 7. We welcome you today to our study of Christian fellowship and its importance. Who do we have fellowship with? What is that fellowship all about? And, and what does Christian fellowship really entail? We're glad you joined us today for our study on the subject of fellowship. If you don't have your Bible, we want you to stop for just a moment what you're doing. Find your Bible, get it out, and get it ready as we're going to look to the Word of God today to learn more about Christian fellowship. We're so glad that you've joined us for our study today. As always, we want you to know that today's lesson is being brought to you by individual Christians and congregations of the Church of Christ. The Lord's Church in your local area would love for you to stop by and visit their assembly. Whether that be on Sunday for worship or Wednesday for Bible study, you would be an honored guest at any of their assemblies. You'll find people there who love God, who love others, and who are deeply concerned about the souls of men and women. Friend, if you've got a Bible question, maybe you're wondering about salvation or the church or, or any number of religious uh, matters, you'll find people in the Lord's church in your local area who'd be happy to sit down and study the Word of God with you in kindness and love and look at the truth of God's Word. Also, here at the Gospel of Christ, we'd love to help you in your desire to know God better. We encourage you to check out our website, thegospelofchrist.com. From there, you can access all our lessons. They're available to you free of charge. In fact, if you'd like to have a copy of today's lesson or any of our lessons, just go to our website, fill out a media request form. We'd be happy to make that available to you as a digital download or other formats if you need that as well. And friend, we want to encourage you also to check us out on Facebook, like our Facebook page, follow us on that. Great way to keep up with things that we're doing. And then, of course, in our fast-paced world today, where everybody's got a smartphone, we want to encourage you to check out the Gospel of Christ app that's available in the respective play stores. You can get it there, and it's a great way to keep up with our new lessons, what we're doing, and just so that you can know how we're trying to spread the Gospel and reach people with the news of Jesus Christ. And as always... We want to thank you today for joining us for our study. Hope you've got your Bible ready. Let's look to the Word of God together. The word fellowship is a very interesting word. There are some words that maybe we might understand even a little better. There is the word partnership. A synonym for fellowship is the word partnership. It carries the idea of a participation in, maybe a, a joint effort. Some words may be words like sharing or an association. The Greek word for fellowship is the word koinonia. It's sometimes used for the communion that Christians partake in, but more than anything, it is a common sharing together. What do Christians share together in? What is this fellowship that we hear so much about in the New Testament? Let's look at the New Testament usage of fellowship so that we can learn more about this powerful idea. And from the outset, we learn that God himself, he doesn't fellowship evil and Christians cannot as well. Habakkuk chapter 1 verses 12 and 13, God is of pure eyes and he cannot look upon wickedness or evil. And we are taught in Ephesians 5 verses 11 through 17, have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. And so we're not talking about a participation in bad things evil things, sinful things. God can't do that. That's not the fellowship that we ought to have. Well, what then do Christians have fellowship in? We have fellowship with first Christians, early Christians, saints of old, in the same worship 
and in the same actions they were involved in in the church. Look in your Bible in Acts chapter 2. Christians have a first century type of fellowship. Acts chapter 2, and I want you to notice what the Bible says about their fellowship and ours today. Acts 2, verse number 42. And they continued steadfastly. This is first century Christians. They continued steadfastly in the apostles' teaching, fellowship, in the breaking of bread, and in prayers. Friend, just like Christians in Jerusalem in the first century, I have that same type of fellowship with Christians today. If we teach what God and Christ and the Bible teaches, hey, we've got something in common. We have a, a common bond, as it were. The apostles' teaching is our teaching found in the Bible today. Their fellowship, the things they shared in, the breaking of bread, the, the, the prayer, worship, evangelism, I'm sharing in for what first century Christians were involved in then. We have that same thing in common today. And so it's a beautiful picture of the original fellowship that we ought to have just like they did in the first century as well. How else, what else is a type of fellowship? Did you know in the Bible, in the Bible, that our giving back to God is also described as a type of fellowship. I want you to open your Bible to 2 Corinthians chapter 8 and the, the action of giving. When Christians bring their funds together and give on the first day of the week as they have prospered, we have a common bond with God and other Christians. Look in 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse number 4. Paul says, They were imploring us with much urgency, that we would receive the gift, now listen to this, and the fellowship of the ministering to the saints. Look in 2 Corinthians 9, verse 13. Paul said, while through the proof of this ministry, they glorify God for the obedience of your confession to the gospel of Christ and for your liberal sharing with them and all men. When, when we give to God's cause, to spreading the gospel, to helping those who are in need, to doing good in our communities, Friend, we have something in common. We have a common bond. We have a common goal to do good. We, we share in a common effort and we have fellowship in trying to help people to save the lost. And, and what a powerful thing that is that, that as we give, we're giving together for the greatest cause in all the world. That fellowship is amazing. Christians also have fellowship with God and His Son. I want you to listen to the words of 1 Corinthians 1, verse number 9. The Bible says, God is faithful by whom you are called, listen to this, into the fellowship of His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. What does every Christian across the globe have in common? Jesus Christ, Him as Lord, Him as Savior, him as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Isn't it amazing that Christians, maybe right here in the United States, have an identical thing in common with Christians halfway around the world who have submitted to Jesus as Lord, who are honoring Him on the first day of the week, who are living for Him every day, who, who, who set their mind to live just like Jesus and to follow His Word? We may never know each other, but we have that powerful fellowship, that sharing together in the fact that Jesus is the Lord of all and he's King of kings of all people. Christians, of course, are encouraged throughout the Word of God to never be in fellowship with anything in the realm of sin. Ephesians 5.11 tells us we're to have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, rather we expose them. If we're children of light, if we walk in the light and darkness is of evil, our light ought to shine on that which is evil and expose it as evil. We can't have fellowship with it. I can't, I can't join hands and share with someone who's living in sin, doing things that are clearly contrary to the will of God. The Bible doesn't allow. If somebody is teaching something that the Bible's not teaching, if somebody is doing things that are not found in the Scripture, 
I can't just go over and join in with them and have fellowship. Why? We're to have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. Rather, we reprove it. Now, friend, if somebody wants to learn the truth, we're going to talk about truth, but I'm not going to join in or act like everything's okay when things are not okay. Let me give another example. Open your Bible to 2 Corinthians chapter 6 to illustrate the fact that Christians are not to be in fellowship with that which is sinful and evil. Listen to how Paul describes this in verse 14. Do not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Why, Paul? For what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness and what sharing or communion has light with darkness? Can light and darkness hold hands? Can righteousness and evil get along and act like everything's okay? What fellowship can we have with that which is wrong? Friend, we can't have that. We can't live in fellowship with that. If we say that we walk in the light and we've got sin in our life, we've got no fellowship with him. 1 John 1, verse number 6. And so the idea clearly is taught that we should not join in with, share with, and participate in evil, wrong, and sin. I'm not saying we shouldn't help. We're not saying we shouldn't try to encourage. We're not saying we shouldn't try to help people of the world see that way. But I'm sure not going to go along and act like everything in the realm of sin and evil is okay as we live this Christian life. And so that's something a Christian should not fellowship, and it's clearly taught in the Bible. Well, what then do we fellowship? Christians have fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Listen to these words. 2 Corinthians 13, verse 14. Paul says, The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion. Communion is another word for fellowship. The communion or fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Listen to Philippians 2 verse 1. Therefore, if there's any consolation in Christ, any comfort of love, any fellowship of the Spirit, if any affection and mercy, Paul will say, fulfill my desire by being like-minded. How do we have fellowship with the Holy Spirit? Well, friend, we have fellowship with the Holy Spirit because as we follow the teaching of Jesus, as we follow the inspired words of the Spirit, and as we do what the words of the Spirit tell us, it puts us in a relationship with Almighty God, and we're in fellowship with God, Christ, and the Holy Spirit as we're living according to, this isn't some mysterious, rather better felt than told type of idea. We have fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit inspired these words. He gave us the perfect life to live through the words of the Bible. And as we live according to that, we're not grieving the Holy Spirit or vexing the Holy Spirit or making Him happy. We're living in line with the teaching of that member of the Godhead. We also, as Christians, regardless of our past or anybody else's past, one of the things we're clearly taught is we need to be willing to extend fellowship to somebody else who's a Christian. Now, I understand sometimes that people have a checkered past. I understand that sometimes it's hard for us to let go of sin, but I want to show you an example of people in the Bible who learn to extend fellowship regardless of the past if the person was faithful. Listen to Galatians 2 verse 9. The Bible says, And when James, Cephas, and John, who seemed to be pillars, perceived the grace that had been given to me. They gave me and Barnabas the right hand of fellowship, that we should go to the Gentiles and they to the circumcised. Now, James, Peter, and John, had they heard anything about Saul of Tarsus before? Had they, had they heard about what happened to, to Stephen when he held the coats? Had they heard about he was like a wrecking ball wreaking havoc on the church in Acts 8? Had they heard that he had official letters from the high priest to carry men and women off to prison in Acts chapter 9? Yeah. But you know what else they heard? They heard what happened to Saul of Tarsus. They heard that the Lord confronted him. They heard that he did a 180 and turned to Jesus. They heard that he was a new man. And they saw some proof of that. And so when they saw Paul, they heard all that. They saw all that. They realized he was a faithful child of God. They said, Paul, let's go to work. They gave him and Barnabas the right hand of fellowship. And friend, that reminds each of us, regardless of somebody's past, 
regardless of culture, regardless of all the barriers that sometimes we want to put up. If someone's a faithful child of God, I need to have fellowship with that person, do what I can to encourage, help them, and help the cause of Christ in every way. But friend, let's also realize this. In the Bible, in the scripture, true fellowship is based on obedience to Christ and someone obeying the gospel. I can't fellowship someone who's not in Christ and who hasn't obeyed the gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let me illustrate. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 9, Paul said, And to make all see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the ages has been hidden in God, who created all things through Christ Jesus. And then Philippians 1, verse 5, Paul would say, For your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now. What's that fellowship based on? People obeying God's mystery, that mystery, that salvation is now found in Christ. People being in the gospel and living according to that. And so if I'm going to have fellowship with somebody, they first have to have fellowship with God. Can two walk together unless they be agreed? Amos chapter 3, verses 1 through 3. If a person is not in fellowship with God, meaning they are not a child of God, they haven't obeyed the gospel, they have not submitted to the Lord's teaching on salvation, how can a Christian, how can another Christian have fellowship? How can you participate, share, and have in common with that person who's still outside of Christ? I'm not saying we shouldn't love them. I'm not saying we shouldn't try to reach them. I'm not saying that we don't want them to go to heaven. But let's be honest. If they're not in Christ, Christians can't have fellowship real fellowship until a person has obeyed the gospel and submitted to the king's teaching on salvation. Well, what else do we have fellowship in? We also fellowship in Christ's sufferings. Listen to Philippians chapter 3, verse number 10. All Christians around the world who've truly obeyed the gospel, a common bond that, that drives us together and motivates us is the suffering of Jesus and his death. Listen to Philippians 3, verse 10. Paul said that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being conformed to his death. What do I have in common? What do you have in common with people on another continent thousands of miles away who've obeyed the gospel? Yeah, when Jesus was beaten, when he was mocked, when he was spit upon, when stripes were laid on his back, those sufferings were them, and those sufferings were for me. When Jesus hung on that cross and died in agony, and he said, it is finished. That happened for me, and that happened for them. The death and the sufferings of Jesus are something that we share in common, that we participate in, that we believe and hold near and dear to our heart, and as a result, friend, we're motivated by that idea. But you know, we also have fellowship with others who find themselves in problems and troubles and distress. When somebody goes through a difficulty, we say they ought not to have to go through it alone. When somebody has some calamity or trouble come into their life, Christians ought to stand up and, and fellowship and help with that. Listen to Philippians 4 verse 13. Notice what Paul says about Christians who helped him. The Bible says in Philippians 4 13, nevertheless, You've done well that you shared in my distress. Think about Paul's distress. Whatever it may have been, from the hands of the Jewish teachers to his being stranded at sea to Paul being beaten, left outside of Antioch and Iconium for dead, to the many things he suffered. Maybe it was just the poverty he was dealing with right then. The distress he felt. Others had a fellowship with that, meaning they, they, they got down on that level, they felt what he was feeling, and they did what they could to help him. For when people are hurting, when, when people are hungry, when people are sick, when people are in need, do you know what true Christians do? They don't stand by and watch. They don't cross on the other side of the road. They don't, they don't act like they're too good to help. We share in, we participate, and we have fellowship in each other's distress so that we can help carry the load and we don't have to carry it alone. My friend, doing good, the Bible teaches that doing good 
and helping people in their time of need is actually a way of fellowshipping. I want you to listen to Hebrews 13, verse 16. The Bible says, But do not forget to do good and to share. Watch now. For with such sacrifices, God is well pleased. The doing good and the sharing, the participation there, Friend, doing good and helping other people is a way of fellowshipping with him. If somebody's got a poverty problem, how am I going to fellowship that person? How can I? I'm not just talking about going over and saying, man, I'm sorry that you're not going to No, we're going to help that person. We're going to take them some food. If somebody's hurting, we're going to try to help them. If somebody's sick, we're going to do what we can to encourage them. If somebody loses a job or has some calamity, we're going to help. And helping is a way of sharing in, fellowshipping with that distress and trying to help lift them, encourage them up out of that. Now, friend, one of the things that must be shared, fellowshiped, if you will, is our faith. Christians must share with others their faith. Listen to Philippians 1 verse 6. Paul says that the sharing of your faith may become effective by the acknowledgement of every good thing which is in you, in Christ Jesus. If you have something really good, last thing you want to do is kind of put the basket under it, right? If you've got something good to tell, the last thing you want to do is sit on it. You want to tell about it. You want to get on the loudspeaker. You want to tell everybody. Paul said the sharing of your faith ought to become effective as well. The participation in and the fellowship that we have in spreading the gospel, sharing our faith with others, the communion we want others to have, the participation in that, that faith that Jesus has brought to the world, that saving faith. Friend, we ought to have a fellowship in trying to reach the gospel, reach the world with the gospel of Jesus Christ and, and how others can, can make sure that they have that access as well. Now, let's talk about this as we come full circle about fellowship. What's the key? What is the real key to Christian fellowship? I want you to listen to the words of 1 John chapter 1, verse number 3. John says, That which we've seen and heard, we declare to you, that you also may have fellowship with us, and truly our fellowship is with the Father and His Son. Jesus Christ. The key to Christian fellowship is we want others to hear the message of Jesus. What, what John says, what, and they literally saw it, what we saw, what John saw when Peter, James, and John were on the Mount of Transfiguration and they saw Jesus transfigured. He became so white, no launderer could make him white. When they saw Moses and Elijah there with them, when they heard that voice on the mountain, John said, hey, we want you to see that and hear it. We want you to, what we've seen and heard, we're telling you about. Why? That you also can have fellowship this away, but more importantly, this away. Friend, we want fellowship with others by others having fellowship with God. The cross of Jesus Christ is what makes that possible. When I have fellowship with God, that is, when I have submitted to the teaching of Jesus, I have heard the word of God. Romans 10, 17, faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. When I hear that message and I'm willing to believe that he truly is the way, the truth, and the life, John 14, 6, so much so that I'm willing to turn from a life of sin and turn to God in repentance, Acts 3, 19. When I acknowledge Jesus as Lord and Savior and I'm immersed in water for the forgiveness of my sins, Acts 2, verse 38, my friend, God adds me to his church and I have fellowship with God. I also have fellowship with other Christians throughout the ages. What do we have in common with other Christians? Friend, we have the same Lord, we have the same church, we have the same Bible, the same Holy Spirit, the same way of worship, the same giving, the same motivation, the same, everything about it is unique, but it also causes great fellowship among God's people. But friend, hear me well today, and this is one of the things we're trying to drive home. There can be no fellowship with God and others 
unless people are obedient to the gospel of Jesus Christ, as bad as I may want it and as bad as we desire it, fellowship cannot exist until people obey Jesus Christ. Listen to 1 John 1 verse 7. The Bible says, If we walk in the light as He is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of His Son, Jesus Christ, cleanses us from all sin. To walk in the light, you've got to do what, you, what God says. You, 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 you can't walk in the light if God's Word is the light, Psalm 119, 105. If Jesus is the light, uh, John chapter 10, John chapter 8, verse 12. So if Jesus is the light, God's word is the light, truth is a beacon of light, I can't walk in that light until I've done what Jesus and God wants me to do. But once we walk in the light, we have fellowship one with another and with Jesus Christ. Fellowship is dependent upon obeying the gospel and trying every day. Am I perfect? That's not what I'm saying but I'm trying to walk in the light. I'm trying to do the best I can. I want to obey the God. I'm trying to do the best I can to live for Him each and every day. But I want to mention this as well. To the Christian, for sure, we've got to make sure we don't ever fellowship the world. Revelation chapter 18, verse 4, tells us to come out from among them. We're to be separate, says God. And so, do we really have that closeness have we obeyed the gospel? Friend, if you've never obeyed the gospel, more than anything, we want you to have fellowship with God and then we'll have fellowship with other Christians. If you are a child of God, then we want to hope and encourage that you'll share in and participate in the things that God wants us to as Christians. And may God help each of us to make sure every day that we're walking in the light and that we have true fellowship with Him and His Son. Join us next time as we study more from God's divine word. Today's closed captions are brought to you by Christian Family Bookstore in Chattanooga, Tennessee. We encourage you to visit thechristianfamilybookstore.com for all your Christian book needs. You may have just joined our program and are wondering, what is the Gospel of Christ? The Gospel of Christ is an evangelistic work of the churches of Christ with its whole aim to take the Gospel to the whole world. We do that through TV, internet, free media, and streaming. Our motto truly is to take the whole Gospel to the whole world, and we believe in having a book, chapter, and verse for everything we say and do. And unlike many religious programs, today, we're concerned about lost souls, not your wallet. The gospel of Christ. Visit thegospelofchrist.com for a host of Bible study materials, including audio and video of our lessons. Request your copy of today's lesson by completing a media request form online. On-demand downloads are also available at thegospelofchrist.com. We would love to hear from you. Email us at mail at thegospelofchrist.com or call 844-6-GOSPEL. You may also write us at the address on your screen. Search your app store for The Gospel of Christ to access our mobile app on your this smartphone. Is the gospel of Christ.